Hello everybody, welcome to Shen Plays. Let's see the nice Kerbin rise here on the Mun. Uh, we are... Well, we built a couple rovers. And we've got two Kerbins with us. And we're going to see if we can't drive around on the North Pole crater on the Mun. God, the North Pole is just a fucking mess. And there's like some wastelands over here. It's just all rocky and nasty. Slow the hell down. We don't need to get any specific part of the North Pole crater. It is just a massive crater. We'll get to whatever part is closest to us. Oh no, we're overheating. That's okay. We've got uh, two rovers and four nukes. Should be good enough, I think. Really bringing our speed down. Let's get our speed down to something manageable. It's hard to see where we're going, so let me turn the lights on as well. <laughs> I didn't bring any wonderful lights, I just brought the lights on the rovers. But hey, it's better than nothing. Man, it's kind of be hard landing on the dark side of the moon here. I just can't see anything. Certainly won't have much of a shadow. Oh, we're actually lifting off. Whoops. Didn't want to do that. Come on, let's drop some more. And the glow. Those are the rear lights on the uh, rovers. Alright. Can't really see the terrain too well. And I can't tell, like, exactly where it's going to be. This says 2,000 meters, but that's not going to be true. It's going to be somewhere above that. Anyone in Twitch chat know the... Um, oh, I can see the scatter now. I can see the ground scatter. Anyone in Twitch chat know the height of the North Pole crater? We're real close. I don't see anything from the lights, unfortunately. But yeah, it's a dark landing. This is interesting. I have not attempted a dark landing before. I kind of like this. There's a lot more adventure to it. This is it. Yeah, there's the glow. Nice. We're here. We have made it. We're down. Beautiful. Fucking beautiful. All right, let's drop you off. Can we do that? Decouple. Excellent. And yeah, we made it so uh, the angle when we dropped them would cause them to roll or to, to land on their on their wheels. So let's get uh, Whirless out. And uh, you can just let go. Get our RCS on. Oh, I turned on RCS and he turned it off. No, he didn't. Okay. Very fucking cool. We got blue lights in the front, red lights in the back. How high do we jump? Oh yeah, that's definitely good enough. In you go. Now each of these has two seats, but it uh, doesn't mean we have to use both seats. Get in there. Nice. 
All right, now go back to the other one. There we go. And we're going to turn the lights off on this. Don't want to waste the whole battery. But uh, hey, Jedred, why don't you hop out? Okay. RCS off. We didn't bring a science junior or anything, but we did bring some science equipment, so we'll use it. Oh man, good times. Now before we go off and kill ourselves, I'm going to F5 and quick save. So uh, just in case things go tits up, oh, we can put it in docking mode. There we go. Uh, the only way these things can flip back over is with some RCS, which is right there. Why am I not seeing the RCS? Oh, there it is, monopropellant. Okay, good. Now the electric charge is going to be very limited because uh, we're on the dark side of the moon right now. But the sun will be over here somewhere. And wow, this does not drive very quickly, does it? Maybe it has to get up to speed. We've got six nice wheels on here. Hopefully it'll go up to speed. And uh, yeah, is that our lander spot? I assume that's our lander spot, yeah. I want to make sure we can find our way back somehow. We didn't plant a flag or anything. Probably should have. It'll never be light on the dark side of the Mun. Oh, doesn't the Mun rotate? Or is it tidally locked? Oh, that could be a problem. If it's tidally locked, then we're never going to get any uh, electricity back. I mean, we have a battery, but we brought solar cells for the whole point of, uh, you know, recharging the batteries. Hmm. Well, we'll see if we get any sunlight over this hill here. If not, then I'm not sure what to do. Oh, we're kind of drifting when we turn. That's a little scary. I'm not sure if we should be drifting, but oh well. We've actually used half of our electrics already, but that's mainly for driving. Okay, can we see the sun from here? No. All right, so we're not going to be able to recharge our electrics, unfortunately. So we should probably turn off the uh, lights and head back. Oh yeah, we should probably uh, plant a flag out here. Why not? Brakes on. All right, hop on out, dude. Um, yeah, hop out. Leave seat. Oh, we can take a surface sample from here, but we can't plant a flag. All right, leave seat. All right, let's plant a flag. Good times. I like that you can take a surface sample without uh, leaving the, the seat. I'm going to call this, uh, Whirless. No, this is Jedred. Dred Jedred on the polar, uh, crater. We brought a buggy, but there's no sun. That is a problem. Surface sample, please. Show intense shock patterns. No kidding. In an EVA report. The dust is getting everywhere. Indeed it is. All right. Back in. I wonder if we can just board it without jumping, because that looks silly. Can we board it from there? No? Okay. Oh, we can board it from there. No? There we go. Much better. All right, let's do some of the uh, science up here, shall we? We have uh, accelerometer. 80 science, thermometer, 32 science, and the gravioli. I didn't bring the atmospheric one because there's no point. And I don't have a science junior. I didn't bring any goo or anything like that, so no big deal. All right, back to the... Oh, brakes are off. Right. Let's go back. 
Hello everybody, welcome to Shen Plays. Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. We are landing another rover on the Mun, this time on the southern crater, the one close to the south pole. And uh, we just did an EVA. Fantastic. We have our upside down capsule. Fantastic. Mainly so we could... Uh, basically the spaceship was behind this giant fuel canister and we launched this thing upside down. Uh, so that we could then uh, descend with our rover wheels down. So nothing would have to flip over. On the previous craft, we had the rover land on its back, and because of this angle, it always flipped onto its wheels, which was great. Uh, but I think this is just a better design. We don't, we don't have to bring two rovers at a time, we can just bring one, and it should work. So pretty soon here, I'm going to flip over and get rid of this can. Uh, I had a staging problem, and instead of having five landing pieces, which would have made it very, very stable when we land, we only have three landing pieces, and they're in a straight line instead of in a triangle. So we're pretty fucked on the whole landing thing, but we'll see if we can't make it nice. Uh, anyway, we're going to slow down to about zero here, uh, flip over and dump this can. I guess that's the idea. Flip over, SAS off. This is what should have gone away first, instead of my other two lander legs. Well, they were actually lander fuel tanks, but instead of the lander fuel tanks, uh, I mean, instead of this thing going away, we lost the lander fuel tanks. It's very sad. Anyway, thrust back up. Save ourselves. Okay, slow down. Now the ground here should be about uh, 500 meters. Uh, according to the altimeter here. Well, it's not really an altimeter, but it's according to sea level or whatever. So let's uh, slow down. First thing we want to do is dump the lander. Hold on. Or dump the rover. So let's get really close to the ground here. Dump the rover. And then lift off. <laughs> Bounce on the rover. Sure, why not? And we'll just land somewhere next to it. It's fine. Oh, no, no, no. That's a little too... <laughs> ah, 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 ah. All right, let's not die. How about that? Come on. We can land next to this thing. Whoa, come on. What am I doing? Look at the look at the gimbal, not at the map. Every time I look at the map, I fuck up. So look at the gimbal, Shen, not the map. All right, get rid of our horizontal. Okay. Yeah, but we're not going to have five landing points like I had planned because I fucked up my uh, staging. So, that's okay. Thrust down, and we're down. Okay, looking good. And we're actually standing up on three legs instead of five. But you know what? As long as we're standing, I'm okay. So, let's get Jedred out. Let go. So this thing should be fine for returning. Basically, the design was we had two engines, and then we had two fuel tanks, and it made a, a cross design. So it would have been very stable for landing, but I done goofed, and I did the staging wrong. So instead, we're stuck with this. Why don't we go ahead and plant a flag? Oh, we can't. Why not? I don't know. a surface sample. Get an EVA report from the southwest crater. Nice. And let's use uh, alt period to fast waddle to our boat. And it looks like what happens when we landed we had the brakes turned on. And it looks like what happens is the brakes turn off when we use physical time acceleration. So the thing starts to roll. That's so weird. Why would the brakes turn off? I don't know. Physical time acceleration is a weird beast. Anyway, we're here. Jump. Wee. Good job, dude. Nice, nice jump, Jedrid. You're the man. All right, get in the driver's seat. Excellent. Let's get some goo. Hmm. Mystery goo. All right, we have antenna. Extend the antenna.
Beautiful. Excellent. So yeah, we're just going to go ahead and transmit all this. Uh, I've already finished all of the science tree, so it doesn't matter what we do here. So do all the science we need. Send it. This is purely for fun. Get that temperature reading as well. Send it. Oh, the antennas actually, they retract when we're done. Don't retract. But yeah, you, this is using a lot of our electrics. That's okay. All right, it's done. Goody. Oh, extend. Oops. Extend. There we go. No? Extend. There we go. Okay, now we need to fast forward time a little bit uh, because we don't currently have any sunlight. And we need sunlight if we want to drive this damn thing because you can see we're down to about one third of our electrics already. So let's fast forward until the sun comes up. There we go. Oh, it's behind Kerbin right now. So wait a little bit. Beautiful. That's what we needed. All right, well, there's our lander. So we should be able to find that. But in the meantime, let's go to docking mode. And, oh, we need to turn on all the engines, right. I turned them off for the flight over. And, of course, brakes are on, but we'll get them off in a second. Get the headlights on. And the tail lights, of course. Looking good. God, this thing looks great. <laughs> I love the look of this thing. Brakes off. And let's drive. I think on Kerbin we were getting top speed of about 21 meters per second. I don't know what we're going to get on this thing. Where are we anyway? Uh, we have a nice flat surface around us. All right, well, we'll try to stay in that area. I don't want to drop into any of these craters. Well, maybe some of the shallow ones. But there are some deep craters, which actually uh, I drove down into... Where's my northern crater here? I drove down into... Which one was it? I don't remember. I drove into one of these craters, and it wound up actually turning off the sun uh, somehow. Like, the sun was directly overhead because we, we fast-forwarded time until the sun was overhead. And then we dropped into one of these craters, and... Oh. And it wound up turning off the sun, meaning our electrics were no longer charging. So we couldn't drive out of the crater because we had no electrics. It was very weird. Hello, scatter object. Non-physical scatter object. Just drive right through it. Oh, this is fantastic. Look at this huge open plane. Now we have RCS. We have six RCS things to flip over in case we need to. And uh, we do have room for two. So the, the basic idea behind this is simply if, if, if one of our dudes gets stuck somewhere or, or whatever, uh, we can drive this over and pick him up and bring him back. So that's, that was the idea behind the design of this rover. It's not the best rover ever. It's certainly not the fastest. Oh, we're getting some air, though. Look at that. Neat. Have a ton of ground clearance. And yeah, we're topping out somewhere around 21 meters a second, most likely. Ah, oh, look at his face. Jedrid, man, you are just the happiest Kerbal, aren't you? Can you do a crew report, maybe? Nope. All right, we'll just coast. I'm not going to accelerate anymore. Let's rename the vessel. We're going to call it the uh, Southwest Southwest Crater Rover. Mark 1. Excellent. Oh, I'm not accelerating, but it's actually increasing our velocity anyway. I guess we were on a downhill slope. Let's see if we can't turn and head over to this part of the basin without tumbling. Nope, we're going to tumble. All right, well, whatever. Let's see if anything breaks. I imagine it will. I don't know. If we bounce on the wheels, we're good. Nope. And eh, there goes some photovoltaic cells. We lost one photovoltaic cell. Eh, whatever. Oh, and one of our wheels busted, so we'll have to repair that manually. Not a problem, not a problem. Okay, so let us uh, RCS. Now, how do I want to do this? I think I want to go this way. Yeah, flip over that way. And then once we're over, we will 
SAS back on, RCS off, brakes on, and let's hop out and fix that wheel. So all Kerbals come with some magical repair kit or something. Just right click and repair a wheel, and there it is, it's done. <laughs> Easiest repair ever. But we did lose a photovoltaic cell, one of the six on the rear, but that's okay, we still have 10 on the front. Shouldn't be a problem. No, we don't have 10 on the front. We have 12 on the front. Yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's keep on driving. Brakes off. Let's go. 22 meters a second is a little quick, I guess. It's, it's not the most stable at that speed, but that's okay. And yeah, this is the first rover I've made in, uh, in Alpha 24. If you've seen my previous Kerbal series, I had um, a few rovers in there. Most of them were uh, eight-wheeled, completely reversible rovers, meaning they would drive on their base, and they would also drive on their roof. Didn't matter. And the Kerbal just sat in the middle and was completely protected. And that was a good rover, but uh, it sure did weigh a lot. And just getting it back and forth between planets was a pain in the butt. So I think we'll stick to smaller rovers on uh, on this playthrough. But I do enjoy rovers. I really do. I wonder if we can get to the South Pole with this thing. How far away are we? Oh, pretty far. Oof. Yeah, that is a long way to the South Pole. Never mind, we're not going there. We could always take a craft over there. I wonder if that counts as a different... Uh... Oh, look. Air, nice. I wonder if that counts as a different uh, place on the on the on the globe. Different, not terrain, but um, biome. Different biome. It might. The North Pole certainly counts as its own biome, but that may be just because there's a North Pole crater. Just gonna use the brakes to get us down to about 10. Don't wanna go too quick. Ooh, we're on three wheels there, nice. Driving from Jed's point of view. This is a nice looking rover. I enjoy it. Ah, the beauty of the Mun. I wonder if we can change our camera at all. Not really. It's the same view. Oh, this is gorgeous. Now, there are some interesting things you can do with actual pods. If you use, if you use command pods, they come with a window, right? And you can orient the window to kind of be like uh, a driver's position for a rover and I think that's the next thing I'm going to do. This is going to be like my my super lightweight, well not super lightweight, but my relatively lightweight rover meant specifically for picking up rescuing people. Uh, but if you build a little bigger rover with more weight uh, you can wind up with a whole lot of cool things like having an actual driving area where when you press V to switch views, like for me, it's only giving me these options. But if you press V to switch views, then you can actually switch into like a forward facing window, like you're driving an actual car. It looks really cool. I think I'll try that next. But anyway, for now, let's go ahead and head back and go back to Kerbin. Oh, hey, there's our flag. I don't know. Wouldn't let me do the flag for some reason, but as soon as we got back, it let me do the flag. Uh, we'll call it the Southwest Crater. 
Uh, what was her name? Oh my goodness, I forget these guys' names. Uh, Jedrid. Jedrid at the southwest crater. Exclamation point. I was here first, bitches. Damn straight. Now, we already have a soil sample. We already have an EVA report. So let's get back in and get a crew report. I think we've already done that, actually. Have we done that? Crew report. Bingo. All right. Well, we're going to leave our rover here. And we can always land another ship at this same position. It should be fine. Uh, there's no atmosphere here, so it should be okay. Now, we have no electrics right now. Mm, that shouldn't be a problem. As soon as we turn on the nukes, we'll get some electrics. So let's get up, and let's get the hell out of here. We're going to go towards 270, retrograde to um, to the Mun. Get back in staging mode. Throttle up. Very good. Rotate a bit so my brain doesn't hurt. There we go. This craft would have been so much more stable with my stupid extra fuel tanks, but hey, that's why you gotta pay attention to staging, right? I literally just went into the um, the building facility, the construction facility, threw this together, and then launched it, and here I am. I, I barely even looked at the staging because it's just all so... You, once you've done the staging so many times, you're just so used to doing it correctly. Like, you know exactly what to do. And I still managed to screw it up. We had the fuel lines done properly. We had all of the separators, everything. Uh, we have our, our engines. We have our RCS. We never even use the RCS, but we have it. And, uh... God, I'm stupid. It happens. It happens. 